Oh, E minor. Sorry. Huh. What's up everyone and welcome to FAQ 125. All the way over there. I just came home from Nam and boy oh boy. <coughs> it was so much fun. I don't know what it is about Nam. I mean, it wears you out, you're exhausted, you're tired all the time, you're just like a zombie walking through those hallways. But it's just so much fun. But I'm really happy that it's over and that there's one year until the next one. So uh, I'm not gonna ramble on too much. Uh, let's just get on with the FAQ and no. I'm not gonna destroy this beautiful t-shirt today. Sorry. Christian Lopez. Hi Ola, can you show us how to pick fast on the low string? For example, songs like Metallica. Fight Fire with Fire or Damage Inc. I've been playing for five years and my hand always cramps or my picking falls. Or my pick falls, okay. Thank you. You are welcome. Okay. Let me grab one of these picks. Oh, uh, I have a bunch of picks here that I got from Nam. You know, people walk around and give me shit. That's awesome. I love that about Nam. But I got like these weird picks. That has a hole in them. I don't know if you can see that, but it's like a looks like a guitar pick from the future, basically. Can you see that? Maybe there's a big one I can show. Oh, here's the bigger one. Looks like one of those, you know, ninja throwing stars or something like that. But there's a hole in them, so uh, yeah, I don't know what that does. But okay. Let's try that. Looks like it's from the future anyway, so... Uh, no. Back to my story. Uh, yes, uh, I got a fair amount of guitar picks while I was at NAMM. And uh, also this. This is a regular Jazz 3 Tordex that I stole. <gasps> I'm sorry. I didn't bring any guitar picks to NAMM, so I had to steal this one. I stole it from the Wormsby booth. I'm sorry. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Whoever owned this guitar pick, I'll send it back to you, okay? You just send me your address. I'll send it back to you. I'm sorry. Also got this new Jeff Loomis Sharp pick. Holy f***, that's a... Ooh, it really digs in there. I like that. Okay, uh, John Petrucci new triangle guitar pick. Let's try, try that. What was the question? Hmm, how to pick fast on low string. Okay. <laughs> Did not like that. Okay, let's try this. This is the Altex John Petrucci. I know I like that one. Okay, so about playing fast on the low strings. Uh, I have a special technique for this that a lot of people are gonna be like, Oh, you're such a f***ing asshole, you look like a douche doing that. Well, sorry, that's just how I play my tremolos. Hello over there. So what I do is that when I'm playing tremolo, I completely switch up my technique. And you can see it on my hand. I do it like this. I kind of lock my f wrist right there. So as you can see, I'm going... I was picking like this before, really backwards, but now it's like really super backwards. You can see I'm locking up my wrist and then I go like this. <laughs> Just don't talk while doing this. <laughs> I'm playing so fast right now. <laughs> So it looks really weird and it's absolutely not the most efficient way of picking fast on the lower strings But that's the way I do it if I'm all warmed up, and you know, it's uh, longer into the day what, what is the time right now? It's 8 a.m. while I'm recording this so it's for like early morning I haven't warmed up or anything like that Ugh. But if I'm in the afternoon, I've been playing guitar all day I can do that for for hours almost and it's just a real good way for me to get my black metal going <laughs> Cry. That's a cool word for black metal. Slice sound. Hey Ola, good to see you still fucking everything up. <laughs> Question, how much of the gear you demo do you still own? Like, do you have a small warehouse full of crap? Greetings from Canada. Uh, thank you so much. Oh, you can't see my game right now. There it is. Look at that. That's, a, that's the game. Uh, well, I don't have a warehouse. I did have a storage unit uh, back before I had this office. The good thing now is that I have all my shit in that room over there. Now, you know, I can keep all my stuff. Before, I had to send a lot of the stuff back because, uh, I mean, for demos, it depends on the brand, but usually I just send it back. I try to keep the gear that I like, like a lot, and that I would see myself using. But other than that, I, I'm pretty good at just slinging things, either back to the brand or just sell it, basically. 
So there is slice sound. Sagaruf DB87. Hey Ola, hope you enjoy <laughs> the Dream Fairy concert. It is an absolutely amazing show. So good, it's scary how spot on Jan Petrucci was. Incredible. Let us know how you enjoyed the show. Okay, so I went to the Scenes from Memory uh, Dream Theater show. I went there with a paying friend and it was amazing, I must say. It's been a while since I've seen Dream Theater now. I mean, back in the day, I went to every show that they had. But I, I think it was at the uh, self title album. I saw that show. I almost fell asleep watching that show. And I was like, okay, I, I, I cannot watch Dream Theater anymore. It, I mean, three and a half hours of Dream Theater, even for me, is a lot. And I'm a fan. So, uh, long time since I went to my last Dream Theater show. Went to this scenes from Memory One. And uh, it was totally kicking all kinds of ass. I mean, when they played Scene From Memory in its fullest, I was basically singing through all of the songs. It brought so many memories back. Oh, even at some points, like, you know, in Finally Free, the last song, I, I teared up. That album meant so much to me back when it was released because that's when I fell in love with Louise and I felt that it was kind of hopeless because she was already with another guy. So, you know, I, I you know, I, it just froze me back. Listening to all those songs, man, they, I mean, they mean so much to me. So uh, I was tearing up at the show. And yes, it is okay to cry. If you're a person. And it's totally okay to cry. Okay? Especially on video. Well, to be honest, that sounded a little bit weird, but let's just go. But let me say, yesterday I was at the Megadeth show in Stockholm. Holy shit! I've never seen Megadeth before. That was incredible, even though it was a short show. And you know, Dave Mustaine has been recovering from f throat cancer. Holy shit. How do you recover from that? Well, okay, he's just going up on stage and keeps on kicking all the kinds of ass. That's admirable, if anything. I mean, I have to applaud Megadeth Sound Guy. Holy shit. It's probably one of the better sounding shows I've been to. Probably like 10 years or something like that. Holy shit, I was impressed. And incredibly tight. And uh, just all through, super awesome. So this month I've been to Opeth, Dream Theater and Megadeth. And you know, Opeth and Dream Theater were awesome, obviously. But Megadeth totally f***ing blew my brains out. Holy shit. I have a much higher respect of Megadeth right now. And also Dave Mustaine for just, you know, putting on a show this close to, you know, his last treatment of throat cancer. Holy shit. So there you go. Dream Theater was awesome. Megadeth. Super awesome, thank you. Gary Diaz, hey Ola, you listen to Ronnie James Dio. Can you do an Ola listens to Dio, if you don't please? Uh, I'm not that much of an avid follower of the works of Dio. However, Dehumanizer by Black Sabbath is my favorite Black Sabbath. And Dio is singing on that one and it's absolutely incredible. You know, I've heard a couple of Rainbow songs, but I mean... Uh, uh, yeah, but Black Sabbath Dehumanizer is where it's at. Rest in peace, Dio, by the way. Vince Coughlin. C cough, not cock. Hi Ola, I was wondering what is the music that you have in the background of your videos? Okay, thank you so much for that because then I can plug myself. Yes, I'm using uh, either my latest solo album, Master of the Universe, which is an instrumental solo album, or some of my feared albums. And uh, if you're interested in this, you can support me by getting one of those albums from either oldenglandshop.com or feardband.com. Thank you so much. It all gets shipped out by my beautiful wife when she's here and uh, she, you know, all the CDs is in that room over there. It's great and amazing. This is best, bro. Seeing as how you don't know music theory or a ton of scales, how did you learn to solo? Are there any tips you can give for someone who is a decent rhythm player trying to figure out where to begin with learning to solo? This is a great question. How do you start soloing? Uh, I have no idea. No, I do have an idea. What I did when I was, you know, starting to play guitar was basically I was, you know, listening to Pantera and Reinfer and trying to kind of mimic what they were playing. And, you know, for the sake of playing lead guitar, it doesn't really matter if you're playing close to the original or not when trying to learn. I think it's really important to listen and try to learn by ear. It's such a strength to have to just hear something on the fly and then be like, oh, okay, da 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 da. Something I did when I was a kid was that when I was watching TV, I would sit with the guitar and whenever there was like title music, I would try and play along to that. So I was kind of like, okay, you know, like I did in the beginning there. So I would like sit and try to figure out the title music on uh, the TV shows that were on. You're just picking out something by ear 
like that is an incredible skill and uh, something you definitely should practice but I think it's more about just trying to find an easy solo that you can start with and uh, then just try and figure it out by ear if you have tabs that's also great I mean nowadays you have YouTube videos where people are showing how to play solos really slow there's a vast amount of stuff out there to help you out just check on YouTube you know find a solo that you really like search on YouTube song that I really like uh, solo played slow you're probably gonna find something I promise Christopher RV, hi Ola, I've seen you become pretty successful as a well-known musician and YouTuber how long or hard did it took you to decide on whether to pursue this career during the time when you transitioned from corporate job world to music world but by the way love your videos thank you so much okay so the transition for this wasn't really uh, that quick to be honest I mean I was doing a lot of this the YouTube thing as a hobby when I had a day job you know I was making a little bit of money but no way near anything to sustain you know and support my family and what needed to be you know I, I needed a day job to have a full salary and uh, when I went to NAMM in 2012 that's when I discovered that you know there was a lot of real people coming up to me and saying you know appreciating what I'm doing that was the point where I'm like okay maybe if I you know do YouTube full time you know my output could be a lot greater than if I were just doing it as a hobby during weekends for instance but if I would be able to do it full time maybe I can make it work so that's what happened in 2012 and then I got asked to join Six Feet Under so I mean that was just a lucky break I didn't plan to join a touring band but I did and I made money out of that so uh, you know I was planning on doing the YouTube thing full time but it didn't you know but that's just not how it all panned out uh, I got to do both touring and YouTube but I slacked a little bit on the YouTube thing because I was out touring a lot so it wasn't really a very quick transition I mean I've been doing YouTube for a long time before I quit my day job you know I was already communicating on the Andrew Sneap forum and you know spending a lot of time building you know my name way before this so it wasn't like an overnight sensation I would say so uh, there you go Christophe Sepre Ayupobne hi hola spot on by Ola by the way Sirlix Slayer hi Ola I need your help I started teach playing on guitar a girl her name's Anna but she won't not study section written and share she won immediately sorry she won immediately playing songs please can you personally tell or write motivation words to her if you will make it sure it will conclude success thank you and hello from Russia thank you so much holy shit that was not easy to read but thank you okay Anna 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 listen to me don't stop do not ever stop you will make it you will become an incredible guitar player just listen to sempre agiobno pobne elniko pe piu thanks for being you and all great content why aren't you coming to Larvi guitar festival this year okay thank you so much yes uh, I had one clinic show for 2020 booked in and that was the Larvi guitar show in Norway I did it two years ago it was amazing I was staying there with Louise and you know we had a spa and it was just it was great and uh, obviously the clinic was awesome because I'm awesome but the main reason for me canceling Larvik this year is because that was the only clinic and workshop I had for this year with all the things happening now I just feel that I cannot put on a good enough show I just cannot practice and commit uh, to a clinic show uh, I mean it's just one clinic show I still have to prepare and practice as much for one clinic as if I would have done 10 clinics so uh, I mean I'm just not there right now I really want to focus on what I'm doing here in the office this year I don't want to travel that much this year because traveling disrupts everything I do it stresses me out the absolute most when I go out traveling or touring or you know when I'm just out in the world so for 2020 I just want to sit here be able to commit and not stress out because I've been on the verge of breaking down because of traveling uh, because it basically f***s up everything surrounding me so that's why I decided to cancel Larvik this year the guys who are running Larvik are excellent people and they were really understanding and nice when I told them about this and uh, I just want to extend a huge thank you to you guys you guys are awesome and maybe we'll see you next year okay Anne Kapap 
Xiocopoia. I love the way you're how you're trying to pronounce their like names. Don't bother trying my name because not every Russian could. Cheers. Well, I just did it and it was flawless, so sorry. Corey Fleming. Hey, Ola, love your channel. Knowing that Nirvana was such an important part of your musical journey, what was it like for you to share the stage with Dave Grohl at Dime Bash? Did you try his barbecue? No, I did not try his barbecue. Yes, it was super awesome that he was on stage. I actually didn't see that he came on stage until I saw the footage afterwards. Because when we started playing the song, he wasn't there, but he joined in the middle of the song. So I, you, you know, I was just in to do my own thing and I just didn't notice him joining. But that was cool seeing him afterwards in the video. So that makes me really proud and happy, you know, just sharing the stage with Dave Grohl and also obviously all the other musicians that were there. It was, uh, it was an amazing experience that I'm really proud of. You know, that I got a chance to pay tribute to Dime in front of a live audience. The camaraderie there was just something else. Everyone was awesome and everyone was having a good time. Would love to do it again. Blair Belle 632 Ola, will you play me and my sheep for the riff of the day? That was the funniest and most unexpected song on the first Fear album I bought when I was in high school. Riff of the day! Riff of the day, holy shit, me and my sheep? What? Okay, me and my sheep, uh, the one and only feared country song that we did. I don't know if it's on Spotify, maybe I'll put it up there. But it goes like this, uh, let's see. Okay. I mean, it starts with a really cool lick that I stole from somewhere. So uh, here it is. Ah, cool, so slow. Easy. to my sheep, oh, they're a bunch of whores. <laughs> and I was walking down the farm that day. What happened, Bob? When I just saw the craziest thing. Uh-huh. All my sheep were lying down on the ground. That right? And I thought, damn, that's weird. Oh, what happened to my sheep? Oh, they lost all their legs. Vader Vig, hi Ola, you gave me back my passion about play and recorded guitar. I can't thank you enough. My question is, there was ever a period in your life? I'm a guy, I don't have periods. Period in your life. When you taught, you stopped to do music or to be in bands because of any reason. I was disappointed many times about crew members who stole the money or just gave up. I couldn't find four other persons who works correct as a band. I tried it for 10 years, more or less success. I love all your content. You are on my new guitar hero. Thank you for everything from Hungary. Thank you so much. That's a really nice thing to say. And uh, yes, I've actually had one of these moments and that's when I had my uh, one of my previous bands. And I've talked a lot about this, especially during clinics, is that I had a band called Subside and we were playing for maybe 10 years. I mean, it was my first real band. We were basically harvesting Stockholm, you know, with gigs and we played the same venue over and over and, you know, basically chasing a record deal and eventually we got a record deal and we recorded an album and it was awesome and amazing. Uh, okay, okay, it was not awesome and amazing. It was pretty okay for, uh, you know, a shitty band. We released the album and the record company filed for bankruptcy and basically everything halted and that totally sucked all the life out of me right there. You know, I was putting all my life into that album. I made, the, you know, cover artwork. I made, you know, I mixed and mastered the album. I did all the websites, you know, I prepared everything for that and just spent so much time for that fucking album. And, you know, it all just went down the shitter. And uh, I was just sick and tired of everyone I was working with at the time. So that's when I decided to uh, create Fear, which was basically just me sitting at home writing music. So uh, at that point, I was feeling like, holy shit, people sucks. I just want to do everything myself from now on. It just, you know, as soon as you get people into your life, that's when all the problem starts. That was my feeling back then. I still kind of keep the same idea with me all, at all times, but it's more about finding the right people. Probably finding people that are better than you. Someone that is contributing just as much as you do when it comes to the music, you know, everything surrounding a band and what needs to be done, basically. So I think it's very important to find people that you can work with and then you stick with those people. And uh, from there you go, basically. And uh, I totally understand what you're saying and I definitely know the feeling that you're having. 
It's not easy, but don't give up. There are actually awesome human beings out there. I promise, I've seen one. Aditya Sisodoya, hola for us, the people who've been following your channel, who know and love you. The thumbnail is hilarious. I don't know what impression you of you it will make on someone just tuning in. Love your work, hola, Godspeed. Thank you so much. He's talking about my wife FAQ, where I had a thumbnail where I'm uh, touching my wife's tet. A lot of people found it hilarious, and some people thought I was being disrespectful to my wife. I mean, if you've seen my channel, you're bound to kind of expect stuff like this. So uh, I, I'm not sure why you're surprised. And I think a lot of the comments, you know, people saying that I, you know, my wife deserves more respect than me touching her on the boob. And I think the people that are making these comments are probably people that don't have girlfriends or are not married. I mean, Luis and I are very open with each other, and I mean, we have a really awesome relationship. I mean, I cannot be happier. You know, I, I rather touch her boobs and your, her ass. What the hell? I mean, she touches my dick occasionally. What the hell? I mean, who, who the f cares? If touching my wife's boob is a problem for you, then I feel sorry for you. Just saying. Chenola, can you tell us a little bit about Fear? The history, the members, the albums, etc. Also, I'm guessing Fear isn't a traditional band in the sense that you have regular band practice and gigs. So, as I said earlier, Fear was spawned from the ashes of, <laughs> you know, me getting a record deal with a previous band. And, uh, you know, I had the idea with Fear that I would make everything myself, just write my riffs and, you know, do program drums on them. And then I found the Mario, the singer of Fear. He was singing for another band and I heard him live. It's like, holy shit, that's an amazing voice right there. I basically asked him, do you want to record some vocals? He came to my place, we recorded some vocals and it became like the first demos of Feared. What happened then was like, okay, you know, the songs are really good. Let me try and, you know, gather a band together. So I got a band together. It was me, Mario, Christian on bass and Henrik on drums. Henrik was a left-handed player, but he was amazing. He had an amazing groove. But uh, whenever we played live, it was a hassle because if we were in between two bands, we had to switch the set over. Oh, <laughs> it was a hassle. But uh, we played a couple of shows in Stockholm and uh, we were doing pretty good, I must say. And we had a gig at Pub Anchor, which is sort of like the place to gig in Stockholm when you're a smaller band. And eventually, because of a tragic event, we had to cancel. And uh, after that, we didn't play at all. So after that, last gig i decided to just continue on with mario uh just continue to write songs you know well enough for an album we probably have 30 songs or something like that and then i joined uh, six feet under in 2012 when i met kevin talley and uh he told me he was doing like session drumming so i thought to myself okay maybe he can do drums for my feared stuff so from then on kevin talley has played the drums on the feared albums for all the feared albums basically and that's basically the setup we've had since then. Jukke Skog has been playing bass whenever, and you know, we played live one or two times with another setup or group of members. We played in Germany, we played at the Frankfurt Music Messe, I think it was 2012 or 13. We also played the Euroblast in 2013 or 14 or something like that. So we had played gigs, it's just not that often. And you know, I'm not planning to tour with Fear. It's not a touring band in the sense, uh, you know, because it would take a lot of effort for me to, you know, find people that would put the same amount of effort into it and, uh, you, you know, practice with a band. It's a lot of work just to get going. And, you know, when I'm not touring, I can't do this. So that's a catch 22 right there. I would love to tour with Fear, but I just don't have the time. And to be honest, I don't really want to tour that much. I want to be home with the kids and I love doing this. So I just want to be home all the time. So there you go. Moss Wall. Hi Ola, how is it going with the karate? Still practicing and wear you a black belt? No, it's not going well. <laughs> Back this past summer when I broke my thumb, I was seriously, you know, thinking like, okay, why am I putting myself through karate? I was actually injuring myself a couple of times, you know, with my legs and I hurt my hand once uh, on practice. And I was like, I thought to myself, hmm, you know, when I broke this thumb, I was like, okay, you know, maybe I should protect my hands a little bit more because after all, that's what I'm working with right there. So unfortunately, I haven't been able to practice karate after that because, uh, you know, I'm a little bit of a wuss. I want to be a little careful with my hands, especially now when my thumb was broken. I still have a lot of pain in it. 
so uh, we'll see, maybe I'll go back to it you know, I worked myself up to blue belt so that's at least a cool color Topper Taylor, hola, how was your NAM experience? is there any gear you're looking forward to? cheers from the US of A thank you so much, yeah, uh, like I said in the beginning NAM is amazing basically NAM is just a big party even though I was not drinking you know, it's a big party where you meet all your friends that you never see it's very overwhelming because you meet all at the same time so it's a little bit too much sometimes you really need to step back and like you know, oh, what the hell just happened and a good thing about Nam is that Luis now goes with me and Luis is so amazing there I mean, she basically takes care of me while I'm, you know, I'm just being overwhelmed I'm like here like oh, 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 all the gear and you know, all the people oh, oh, oh. and Luis is kind of, you know, she can pull me out of there and like okay, let's uh, take a breather for a second, go out and eat something or you know let's go back to the hotel and chill for half an hour or something like that she's really good with that, she sees when I'm overwhelmed and she can just basically pull me out of there so um, I'm really proud to have Luis with me and uh, it's also nice because a lot of people come up to her and you know <laughs> want to take her picture because she's the wife that's, that's actually fun to see gear wise I didn't actually get to see that much gear, I wish I had more time for that I think the one piece of gear that I'm excited the most about is probably the orange stamp terror or whatever it was, terror stamp, terror stamp which is basically like an orange pedal amp lift fire I don't know, I was a little bit excited about that the other things, I mean there's a lot of cool shit at NAMM uh, I... Uh, yeah, it's hard to say I was just happy being there and sharing that with my with my beautiful, beautiful wife and that was the last question, holy shit uh... <laughs> hi, what's up? thank you so much for watching this FAQ sorry for seeming like I'm uh, a little bit tired it's because I am tired I'm like uh, a lot tired <laughs> right now but it's gonna be awesome what makes me really excited about uh, me getting back home from NAM is that I finally get a couple of weeks of me working in my office I mean, before now it was the holidays, us moving in and all that now is my chance to, you know, get back to work to grind here in my room and I'm really, really looking forward to it and uh, I have some great content coming I just cannot wait to show you what's in store so there you go, guys, thank you so much for watching my video and mwah, my beautiful YouTube members, I love you if you have any questions, post them in the comments section. Love you long time. See you next time. Bye.